Recently, Google launched their latest AI language model. This is a large language model called Gemini. It comes in three uh, sizes, one uh, that can run in a smartphone, the other in uh, it's uh, like a ChatGPT replacement or competitor. And then they have their ultra version, which um, they have a demo only. And it looked uh, maybe a little bit too good to be true. So I wanted to try these models. The in theory, you can use Bar to test a uh, Gemini. In my case, uh, it is not working. It has not been released uh, for at least for me, for my account and my region. So instead, what I'm going to do is to go to Google Cloud and use Vertex AI, their uh, machine learning service, which uh, you can try the model for free and you can even access uh, their API to build applications on top of, of their models. We're going to test the model in the Google console and uh, see how the API works and see how we can connect with applications and build applications on top of Gemini. Here we are at the Google Cloud Console. Using Vertex AI is not as simple as ChatGPT. This is really, you need to be a little bit familiar with uh, Google Cloud and uh, the interface. So we are going to do a little bit of an introduction uh, to if you never used Google Cloud. Basically, you need to log in with your uh, Google account and then create a project. You need at least one project. Uh, and then you have to go to billing and create a billing account. So once you create your billing account, you tie this billing account to your project. You need to add a credit card, but it won't be charged unless you use some of the services that are paid. You, I recommend setting some uh, budget alerts. So in case you, by mistake you start a machine or some cluster or something like that, you get an alert. But once you have that, you have the project and you have the billing account, you can we can go directly to Vertex. So to locate Vertex, we go to the menu, select all products, then artificial intelligence. And the first one here is Vertex AI. You can pin it so it stays on the menu. So here we have the first project. The first time you will need to enable the recommended APIs. It will take some maybe a few minutes. In the meantime, we can see a little bit of the services they have here. They have the model garden, which is basically you will find models like Gemini, um, open source models you can run and deploy directly in Google Cloud. You can also fine tune and train models. Then you have a few other options like Studio, to this is like Jupyter Notebooks, but online uh, you can use to do machine learning in the cloud. You also have a few other services to prepare data sets for training, to deploy and to, to train models. So once you're done, you can you can locate Gemini in two ways. You can go to the Vertex AI Studio and you can find both the multimodal Gemini, which can process images and the normal Gemini, which is like ChatGPT3. Or you can go back and go to the model garden. We can uh, pick any of these models and test them out on, on the cloud for free. But let's test and go directly to Gemini Pro. So here we have on the right side, we can select the model. Gemini Pro is what we want. We have also other models for code. This is the older model, the Palm models that uh, powered BART, at least the first version of BART. Uh, but we are going to stick with Gemini Pro. And we have the settings here, temperature, token limits. Below the settings, we have this safety. This is something you can't find on ChatGPT. And basically it lets you block some of the responses uh, by category. So this is a way of preventing uh, maybe harmful responses from uh, being replied by the model, which is, I think is a nice feature to have. The first thing I want to do is to test how smart uh, Gemini Pro is at reasoning. So I'm going to use a riddle. This is the Sally sisters uh, riddle. Basically the answer is that Sally has only one sister. Uh, by the wording, it seems that you have six sisters in total, but they're, the real response is that Sally has one sister. Okay, so it's not getting it correct. So let's give it a thumbs down and say confirm. By the way, ChatGPT4 answered this riddle correctly. The only one that also fails is ChatGPT3. So this, at least on, on logic, it seems it's more on the level of ChatGPT3. Another option we have with Gemini is uh, the multimodal version. You know, this is the same thing, uh, the same model, but it accepts uh, images. And we have a few example prompts. 
For example, let's pick this one, which is extract text from images. Yeah, so it's, it's exactly this. So let's clear this and insert some images of our own. I don't know how to draw, but I went to autodraw.com. You can make some really simple drawings and it will generate something that more decent. So let's test that. We have basically a, a swan kind of bird, and we are going to ask, can you tell me what you see? A simple line drawing of a swan in flight. So very good. Let's test a different image. This time is a whale or the tail of a whale. Pretty good. The drawing is of two whale tails in water. So very good. By the way, this both of these tests passed on chat GPT-4, it's going to be able to recognize and it's also going to provide more context so the chat GPT answers uh, are more verbal, not just uh, what I'm seeing. I did not test chat GPT-3.5 because it doesn't allow to upload images, it's not basically, it's not multimodal. Let's clear it and let's test with a different tactic. This is basically a grocery list that my wife made, so it's made on basically a paper towel so let's see if uh, Google uh, Gemini Pro can detect these uh, ingredients they are in Spanish so it's uh, even harder the answer is pretty decent considering the this is handwriting um, uh, basically it got 7 out of 12 of the ingredients correctly and this is on par with ChatGPT4 and Bart both got uh, most of the ingredients. ChatGPT4 got seven also ingredients correctly, and Bart got five ingredients correctly. So uh, I think the vision is quite uh, good, at least compared with ChatGPT, it's on the same level of ChatGPT4. In a previous video, I tested a different coding assistant using the traveling salesperson problem. This is a known problem in computer science that uh, scales very quickly as you add more cities so it has different solutions and i want to test that in uh, gemini pro let's prime the model by asking if it knows about the problem so we have here a few possible solution approximation algorithms exact algorithms so since it knows what the problem is about let's ask so for some code we'll start with three cities and let's copy the code there's no copy button so it's just simply copy the code. Let's create a new file, copy the code and test it. And we have a value error. It's not taking in account the name of the city here. So we are not for a good start. Let's paste this into Gemini. Give me a new function. Let's replace it with the new function and see what happens. Okay, we have uh, an answer so it took a while but we are we are there now let's see if it can generate an approximate solution for that we are going to ask for more cities 20 cities should be enough so it's explaining us why we can use brute force which makes sense so it's going to employ like an approximate solution which is what we would expect in this situation let's try this code we'll create a new file paste the code and test it Okay, again, we have the same error. We'll go back to the model and ask for a correction. So it gave me two revised functions. Okay, the new functions are plugged in and okay, we have a different error. Well, I, I think uh, we can say uh, that Gemini Pro is not great for coding. It's not producing code that runs on the first try and you have to continue giving more shots. So uh, I would not put it uh, ahead of ChatGPT4. I think in in the past version, in the past video we did, uh, ChatGPT4 and Copilot were the best solutions depending on your needs. So I don't think uh, it's that Gemini Pro is as good as ChatGPT4 coding. Obviously, your millage may, may vary, but uh, it's not impressive in in coding capabilities. So next, I want to test how we can use the API in case we want to build an application on top of Gemini. And one interesting thing is that we can ask here some, some question and get the code to do the same question with the API, which is great to get started. So here we have some answer. I asked for a poem and 
we click here, get code, and we have the option of getting Python code, Node, Java, or curl directly. Let's take the Python code, let's create a new file, and paste the code. Now, we can't really use this code directly uh, unless we have already authenticated with Google Cloud. So before we try this, we need to do a few steps. If you have never used Google Cloud, you will first need to go to uh, cloud.google.com slash SDK. We're going to install the cloud command line. We have the instructions for different operating systems. It's a matter of downloading the zip or the tarball. Once downloaded, we're going to unzip and run the install script. And finally, run gcloud init. This will uh, use the browser to authenticate our session and our computer will be connected with Google Cloud. Now we are not done. We run gcloud init to connect our computer to the Google Cloud. Now we need to run gcloud op application default login. This is uh, basically your letting applications connect to Google Cloud on your behalf. So we need to run this command. It will open a browser page and will ask for confirmation. And now we are ready. Uh, basically what it that did here is uh, connected my application to my default project here, which is called Valent Store. And we should be now ready to run uh, our program that I copied from the Vertex AI console. Let's open this a little bit and we see here the response. We have the poem here and we have extra information. This is basically, uh, this is a nice thing. Uh, it basically says how safe the output is. This is a nice thing that was added to Gemini and Google Cloud. Well, Gemini Pro is kind of a mixed bag uh, compared to ChatGPT and even Bard. I think it's worse. Um, the API is nice um, and uh, the fact that you have a free tire that lets you do 60 queries, queries per minute is uh, nice. Uh, a good uh, opportunity to experiment and test it out. I'm very curious to know uh, when the Ultra model, which is the one that was advertised by Google, will be available uh, generally. Uh, it supposedly is better than ChatGPT by their own benchmarks. So once that's uh, out there, we are surely going to explore that. And I also want to do some exploration of the other tools like uh, training models and preparing data sets for tra training and fine tuning. So that's all things for uh, next video. So if you like this video, please like, subscribe so you don't miss the next one. So thank you for watching and see you on the next one.